Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well. Viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Marty! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody. Let's just get right on into this. We're yeah, still continuing it. with the Mason system. Sorry, Mr. Stewart. We're done talking with you. Oh, come on. Back. All right. Oh, so we are either going to the detention center or, or the Drew, Drew Studio. Studio. Yep. We can go to Drew Studio in the past? Yeah. Sick. Let's do it. Seven years ago, Drew Studio. I figured you'd come here sooner or later. Wow, it looks like a dump. I decided on sooner. Drew Misham, was it? I, I haven't done anything illegal. And I didn't come here to whine about past events. I wanted to ask you some questions. I suppose you have the right. That day, the entire court descended into chaos. Only you stood still, your eyes calmly watching. I admit, it made quite an impression on me. I'm used to finding myself in outrageous situations. Phoenix Wright, was it? I'll answer what I can. I'm not sure, but it feels like I'm being watched intensely. Oh, she's so cute and so little. Ah, this is my daughter. Vera, say hello. She has a Mickey Mouse notebook. Yeah. <laughs> she's gone. Shall we begin then? Judging from this place, you're a painter? Not, sadly, a profitable one. I've never sold a painting. It's a source of considerable embarrassment. I would be able to get by were it only me. Your daughter? Her mother grew weary of me and left. I don't want her to grow up needy, Mr. Wright. That is why I began my other occupation. Forgeries. Don't look at me with those eyes. I know what it is that I do. More than half of the paintings they bring me are stolen. And who knows what my copies are used for. But some of your works aren't paintings, correct? You may not believe me when I tell you this, but that was my first work outside painting. What? To think it would be used as evidence in a murder trial. I never even imagined the possibility. Then why did you take the job? I was well paid. Very well paid. I think he feels worse about it than I do. The past is hard to escape. Honestly, the sooner I can put this behind me, the better. With apologies to you, of course. Sorry, but it's not going to be quite so easy. He's trying to forget what he made. Looks like I'll have to remind him. Your work. Don't try to pretend you've forgotten. Sure, all you did was make a copy. But that copy might have destroyed the life of an innocent man. I'm responsible too. Which is why I have to know. And you have to tell me. I knew it would be difficult to escape this. Then let's talk. Well then, ready to tell me about this work you did? It was unlike anything I had attempted before. I guess it would be a little different from paintings. That's not what I mean. In all my previous work, it sufficed to create a copy. This wasn't a copy? The client gave me two things that day. The first was a sample page, as reference. The second, a printed document I can only surmise was written by my client. So you used the real writing as a reference to reproduce what the client wrote? Y yes As I said, it was my first job of that nature. So... Who was your client? I, as I said in court, I, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I... I never met them! Not personally, I... Yeah, I figured that would happen. Only two 
to? Ah, a psych lock. Of course. It seems like you're still hiding something. Something about this work. Ugh. Uh, we can't break it? I'm well, let's examine stuff first. What's this painting here? Ah, that's one of mine. It's an illustration for a book. It's not on sale yet, of course. But I thought it might be a good business. As a father, I'd like to be able to put food on my daughter's table. Hmm, not a feeling I know anything about. At least not yet. I think this takes place before he meets Trucy. Yeah. Paints are scattered all around. Probably the ones he's currently using. There's something very artistic about a messy room. Not that this is anything compared to my office. I guess that would make my office a masterpiece. Ah, going home by any chance? Uh, uh, no, I was just checking out the door. Oh. Good thing I'm far too stubborn to take hints like that. No clues here. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Steve. Blowing. It's a it's a face. Paints are scattered. Oh, wait. we already examined that. My bad. I like this music a lot. Oh yeah, Drew Studio's great music. You use these gizmos for painting? They're pretty elaborate. Ah, uh, those those aren't for painting. They're for analyzing. Paint composition, age, every conceivable angle. Tools of the forgery trade, I guess. Paints and pigments are lined up on the shelves, with some noticeable gaps. It's embarrassing, but I can't afford all the paints I want. I insist on buying the ones I use with my own money. I can see how you'd want to do that, sure. Perhaps you've heard that you can make any color, as long as you have the three primary colors. Well, it's a lie. Poor guy. There's some finished paintings stacked here. They don't look all that bad, really. I'll sell you one for 50 cents. That's okay, they look kind of heavy. Uh-oh. Maybe he needs to work on his sales technique a bit. Maybe I'll just sidle on over here for a closer look. What's this red envelope? Ah, don't touch that. That's, er, it's quite important. The painter's face just changed hues. Guess I'd better behave, though it's tempting to just grab it. That's a pretty bottle. Ah, don't touch that, please. I'll get in trouble. It belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. She looks at it often. There's a light pink fluid inside. Nail polish, I'm guessing? This is you and Vera? Yes, yes, we took that one quite recently. I know, I'm a painter. Why not paint a portrait instead? I've never been that good at people, unfortunately. Ah, right. Shouldn't you practice? Check out that. That's an awfully small frame. What's that inside it? A stamp? Ah, please don't touch that. I'll get in trouble. That stamp belongs to Vera, you see. She always puts it somewhere she can see it. That's Zack and Valent. The grammar is, isn't don't it? Let it go away. I want to look at oh, okay. So, very interesting. Trucy wears the exact same colors as her mother. Yep. Which is cool. Then they've got the yellow and the red. She looks absolutely nothing like her parents. <laughs> she like, looks a bit like her mom. Like maybe the hair. It's kind of weird that she's so... The rest of her... It's going to sound terrible. It's weird she's so white. <laughs> yeah, the rest of her face is like... Maybe Zach looks... just has a, a huge tan all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's just working. He's like outside all the time like, yeah, tanning. <laughs> Valent, on the other hand, can't tan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, are they related, Valent? Or is it just like, no, oh, it, they're, you're, they're you're two in guys. this troop, therefore you have the same last name? He, that's their stage names. Right. The post office issued that commemorative stamp last year when the Grammaries were at the height of their popularity. Not anymore. Now that one of them has vanished off the face of the earth. Vera went to see one of their shows when she was quite small. 
She's been a dedicated fan ever since. She watched them every time they came on TV, until the end. I see. But that stamp's quite hard to come by, I hear. I still wonder how she got her hands on it. Commemorative stamp added to the court record. Yep. All right, dude. Can we take him down? I think so. Okay. Yeah, see, the red ones have yellow this as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. But like, the yellow really popped on the black. That's true. I feel. I think that there's less yellow on the black. I don't know. We'll, You're we'll hiding see when we something. Look at it. Let's hear it then. What are you hiding from me, Mr. Misham? I'm sorry, but I really don't know. I never met the client. True, when I asked the client's name, there were no Cyclops in sight. Regardless, you're hiding something. You have to be, otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. <clears throat> Why are you doing this to me? Well, I've made my stand. No backing down now. So what's Misham hiding? The forger, the sample, the client. Um, he is hiding who the forger is, because that's his daughter. Right. The sample of what? What is that supposed to mean? Uh, yes. There was a reference. Why should I hide that? Huh? Oh. After the trial, I submitted everything to the court. My work, the sample page, everything. I can give you directions to the court if you'd like. Th that's fine. I know where the court is. Never mind. That's not what I was thinking of. Unless you were just trying to get me to leave. Uh, I'm sorry. I can sometimes be a little blunt. Like I said, I never met the client. How could I hide someone I do not know? Ouch. He did say that, didn't he? And with no Cyclops either. So he's not lying about that, I guess. Yeah, it's the forger. Ask as many times as you want, my answer is the same. I personally never spoke to the client. You personally? Ah, er, that is. <clears throat> I can pretty much piece together what it is from what you've said. Wh what is it, then? You told me the, that what you knew about the clan. And I couldn't see any Cyclops. Cyclops? Is that some sort of asylum security? Or a new hairstyle, perhaps? But then they did show up, didn't they? Who was your client? As I said in court, I do not know. Really? Even for such a suspicious request? If it was me, I'd want to know as much as I could about the requester. I never met them. Not personally, I... Not personally. Those words triggered the psych lock. Again, with the cycle locks. Now I really must know what they are. So you didn't meet with the client. But someone else did. Maybe the real forger behind this evidence? <clears throat> Perhaps I'm hung up on this lock business. But I'm afraid you've lost me. Yeah, well, I didn't come here to talk about Cyclops. As long as I came to the right conclusion, it doesn't matter how I got there. And your conclusion is? The real forger behind this wasn't you, Mr. Misham. P poppycock <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's my work, I tell you. Made here in my studio. Who else could it have been but me? That's the real question, isn't it? If the forger wasn't you, then I don't have many other people to choose from. The real forger at Drew's studio is... Apollo Justice! <laughs> well, Mr. Misham? How old would Apollo have been during <laughs> Let's seven check. years ago? He's 15. He's a... S wow. High school student. <laughs> He's 25. Me kids? <laughs> sure, why Wait, not? how old is Russell? 29. And then Vera is 12. 12. Yeah. Wow. Uh, feel free to accuse them of being a forger. Oh I'll even tell you how to get to the court. <laughs> I know how to get to the court. <laughs> I wonder what Apollo Justice would have been like in high school. Loud. Well, loud, but like, what What would he have done? Like, what sports or clubs would he have been a part of? He would have the run. Literature he would club. have. He would have run to be um, the student body president. <laughs> With my cards of steel, I can't lose. And he would have failed, but he would have gotten like vice president. Okay, now I'm confused. Who's really making the fakes here? The real forger is your daughter, Vera Misham, isn't it? Ridiculous! My daughter's only 12 years old, Mr. Wright. I've always been more one for landscapes, not surrealism. Nice comeback. But you're shaking in your boots. I've got you now. The only two people with access to this studio are you and your daughter. 
Notes, the Cyclox tell me you're not the forger. Which makes your daughter the only possibility. Damn. I feel very much on the verge of going Psycho Lock myself. Yeah. Phoenix is so candid about talking about Psycho Locks now. He's theory. Thank you, Maya, for giving us a Magatama. And Pearl for powering it up. Yeah. I don't know how you knew, but you're right. The one who made this page was my daughter, Vera, not I. She's only 12. A genius, you might call her. A precocious little girl outshining her father. There's been a lot of that going around recently. I let her play in the studio, and she watched me. She taught herself in that way. The drafting tools and the analytical devices I bought when they became necessary. They're my little girl's playthings now. Ah, do I detect a bit of fatherly pride? So, Vera was the one who made this page. Would she know who the client was then? Actually, the client came once. Here. To this studio. What?! Why didn't you say so sooner?! But their face was covered, and they did not want to talk to me. So, they talked to your daughter? I will speak only with the artist, the client told me. That little girl might know something about him. Well, she said the literal devil, so... Okay, what do I do now? Yes, yeah, Satan kept popped in with his <laughs> red body and his goat <laughs> horns and his hooves, and he's like, Hey, can I talk to Vera? Yeah. Oh, I guess. Well, I guess, <laughs> if you say so, <laughs> What do I do now? Maybe I should talk to her father a bit more? Or is it time to turn my attention to Vera? Well, yes! Mr. Misham, I have a request. Let me guess. You'd like to speak with my daughter. Can I? My daughter has never been one to talk to strangers. But she's done a lot. She's quite shy. Extremely so, actually. With only one exception. Which was... Oddly enough, it was that client. I left the studio while they talked. I returned when they had finished, and she was laughing. It was the first time I had seen anything of the sort. Please let me speak with her. Alright. It was probably valid. He left his daughter alone with the forging client. That's... The, the, okay, Artie, there's a number of things wrong with this Absolutely. guy and this family, so... Uh-oh, this could be tough. She's so adorable, though. Vera, was it? I would... Would you like to have a friendly chat? Uh, I'm Phoenix Wright, ex-lawyer and pianist. Never mind, this takes place after <laughs> after you meet Trucy. I'm still looking for the kids that say do re mi. Can't find them anywhere. I'm no good at this. I need somebody to get through to this girl. <laughs> this is exact same dialogue if you do the other one. Okay. <laughs> what is he full of this dead guy? <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, don't do that. Show him the amazing Mr. Pat. Um, what do you think about this? She's like, why won't this weird man go see away? How, see how she keeps eating her thumb? Yeah, I do. That's what I was thinking about. I with think I just made her nervous. I need something to grab her attention. But what? Show the... yeah, stamp. And then, there's this. My stamp. Hey! She spoke! She can talk! Yeah, so this stamp. Ah. How can I keep her talking? Can I have it? No! Love the frame! Great magicians, aren't they? <laughs> um, these are all terrible. <laughs> Let's start with can I have it? Uh, can I have your stamp? No way! It's my favoritest thing in the whole world! Back! Ah, sorry, sorry! I won't take it, promise. Wow, if looks could kill. <laughs> Love the frame! This stamp, it's got a really nice frame. I don't think so. Yep, just keep her talking like that. Great job, right? Isn't troop grammary amazing? Uh. Hmm? Yes? Oh. I especially like those two, uh, Zack and Valen. I mean, they're, uh, just so magical! Aren't they, aren't they? Yeah! Whenever I go to one of their shows, I'm like, Whoa! Magic! <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> me too. Me too. I, I love them. They're, they're so cool. It's like... Like magic! Yeah! 
All right, she's talking. Not saying much, but it's a start. I went and saw them with Father the other day. The opening ceremony of the Grammary Music of Ma or Museum of Magic. The Grammary Mu Museum? They have one of those? I guess it makes sense now that they have their own commemorative stamp. So, have you been to one of their shows? Just once, when I was little, with Father. The Grammary's on stage. It was like a dream. Disappearing, reappearing, cutting apart, putting back together, they do it all! Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe you can keep telling me stuff like this? You know, uh, about Zack and Valent, maybe? Oh, oh, sure. Alright, better get asking before she changes her mind. I don't go outside much. I like to paint in here. Why don't you like the outside? There's bad people out there. Well, true, but there's lots of good people, too. Actually, I, I should tell you, she was almost kidnapped once. Yeah, that seems Ki to be a recurring theme. Kidnapped? Since then, she's been, well, you can see for yourself. She refuses to leave the house. I see. Wait, but that doesn't make sense. She said she went to the Grammary Museum. With you, in fact. Ah, uh, yes, actually, she was quite insistent on it, much to my surprise. That was the first and last time she expressed such a desire to me. That person gave me a good luck charm. A good luck charm? For when I absolutely had to go outside. Yes, uh, apparently she received something. A gift. From that client, actually. She won't tell me what it is. Father! I told you to keep that a secret! From that client, huh? This I have to hear about. So, your father tells me you're good at painting all sorts of things? I really like painting. A lot. Father's always very happy when I paint them exactly the same. So, you did this too? Oh, yes! That was my first job! Your first? All I used to do was paint the same thing I saw. But this was totally different. The pen slips and the way the writer held up the pen and the pressure on the nib. I had to use a microscope and analyze it on the computer. She seems happy. Odd, her work was the last nail in the Grammary coffin. I guess no one told her. Why would you tell her? You're the best in the world. Huh? Oh, you mean true Grammary, of course. Father gave this to me. Your father? But I asked him about it. He didn't know how you got it. Oh, oh, um, I guess I just took it, yeah. Took it? Father got a letter from that person. That person? You mean that letter was from the client? Oh, we talked about the Grammaries forever that day. I'm sure that's why I was sent that stamp. I didn't want to just send it back, so I took it. They're a sneaky one, this client. So they were trying to get on her good side. Commemorative stamp updated in the court record. So, you met the person that asked you to do this job? And you talked with them? Is this after they moved? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. What's this about a good luck charm you received? I can't talk about it. Eh? If I do, it won't work anymore. That's what I was told. Yeah, but I really, really have to know. Right. Time to do some psych unlocking. The client. You seem to trust this client. Quite a lot, in fact. Because they gave you this stamp? No, that's not why. They listened to me. It's my problem. The problem that keeps her inside all the time? Don't go outside if you don't want to. That's what they told me. But when I absolutely have to go out, all I had to do was use a good luck charm. A good luck charm that your client gave you? I think I know what your client might have given you, actually. Is this your good luck charm? A syringe? <laughs> that would be very dark. It was a gun. It was a gun. <laughs> this is America. You got a gun. 
If this doesn't bring good luck, I don't know what would. <laughs> classes on how to use it and keep yeah. the safety on and stuff. Yep, yep. <laughs> I see. Luck charms are different for different people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What do you mean? Is it, don't all Americans hold this? If you say it's lucky, then it must work for you. <laughs> oh, it does. That's the beautiful thing about good luck charms. <laughs> I'm so glad we did that. Yeah. See that innocent smile? Everyone has a different way of breaking the news. That's the beautiful thing about being totally wrong. I guess I know what your client might have given you, though. Do you know what it is? It's either the nail polish or the commemorative stamp. She already said the stamp wasn't it, so... So, it's the nail polish. This was what they gave you, wasn't it? <gasps> the same bottle's over there on your desk. Well, I know who the client is! Your good luck charm, right? I heard once. Cosmetics were once thought to ward off evil. This is a magic bottle. It has the power. Uh, of course it does. I'll just refrain from commenting anymore on that one. Well, obviously, think, uh, Kristoff's the one who I think gave I know her. who gave you that bottle, actually. The one who asked you to do this job. Was this the client? Obviously, it was... It was... <laughs> Meek! <laughs> She's no. the mastermind! Vera, is something wrong? I won't tell you. Even if that is the client, I won't. So you say. But I know it wasn't the client. I don't see any Cyclops clattering to the floor. <sighs> well, it's Kristoff. How Gavin. did I get that one wrong? The answer is Christoph dangling right in front of my face. So this is one of the plot holes where it's like, how did he know Kristoff had the bottle if he found that out in the future and then came back to the past? Right. He, he met Kristoff after the trial. He could have been like, oh, Kristoff does his nails in a very, very unique bottle. Yeah, it is unique. This man is a friend of mine. Know him? I already, like, I already don't care, though, if that's even a plot hole, because it's like, this is basically a, we're gonna time travel around in a computer type thing and figure out everything. Yeah. So. His name is Christoph Gavin. He's a lawyer, actually. I, I promised. I promised not to tell. <sighs> But was it really successful? Look at that face. I'm sorry. I can't talk about the client. I promise. And if I break my promise, the spell won't work. I don't need a name anymore. I've got my answer. You're pretty confident in this charm, then? I think... They might be the devil. Huh? Or maybe... An angel? Wh what do you mean? I saw it. Or I think I saw it. When they gave me this, I saw the devil's face. Are you saying the client's face looked like the devil's? No, the, the client was gentle, with a gentle smile. So, where did you see this devil then? It was so quick, I don't remember well. But, that's when I knew the person wasn't like other people. That's why I believe in my good luck charm. I'm not sure what this devil she saw was. But it's pretty clear that Christoph Gavin has her charmed. Well, I think that's all. I'll be leaving now. I am sorry for what happened. If you want to apologize, try my client, Zach Grammary. No, he's a jerk. Mm -mm. Um, did I do something bad? What makes you think that? Your eyes. They're sad. Very sad. I'll put on my smile next time I come. I promise. I hope to see you smile then too, Vera. Oh. Okay. Take care. Thinking back on my first encounter with the young forger, I witnessed something of vital importance that day. Of course, by the time I realized it, it was already too late. I know we're... Getting close to the half hour mark, but we're gonna do one more. Yay! Let's go to the detention Santa. Sure. I want to talk to people. 
I don't know who we're going to see. Seven though. years ago, detention center, visitor's room. What strange sight doth mine eyes behold? Oh. Excuse me? You. Two men on either side of a single transparent pane. Yet it seems fickle fate has switched sides, so to speak. The forger of fakes walks freely, while the innocent languishes within these flexiglass confines. There's been no proof that I forged anything, nor proof that I took the life of my dear mentor. Yet, these chains cannot hold me for long. The stage awaits. And what, may I ask, awaits you? A little piano and a cold little hole in the wall. But, since you are here, what shall we discuss? The shooting of Magnify Grammary, for one. Who pulled that trigger, Valent or his partner, Zack? His partner vanished before the answer could be found. If I'm going to get any closer to the truth, this is the place to start. Old detention center music, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I just realized. That guard keeps stealing glances in this direction. And scratching his head. Maybe our resident magician showed him a trick or two. It's like, what's happening? Smile for the camera. Smile? You're on candid camera. I just had to say it. Old habits die hard. Maybe I should do a few tricks for the viewers at home. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> Talk to me. I have to hand it to my partner. He knows how to make an exit. That's talent. Yes, he made my attorney's badge disappear, and he never even touched it. <laughs> Glory's spotlight always leaves someone weeping in the shadows. Yet his very disappearance is itself a revelation. Revealing what? Zack Grammary killed Magnify. It's as good as a signed confession. That's certainly been public opinion's take on it. I grow tired of my cage. And the time of my release is near. I must go and prepare. Planning on jumping back into the magic right away? As long as an audience waits with bated breath, there will be Valent. And also... Yes. Now that my partner has disappeared, Magnify's repertoire is mine. Valent Grammary has a tradition to uphold. Is that true? Seen in this light, the trial was quite good to me, verdict or no. And you can't pay for that kind of publicity. No such press is bad press, is, as they say. Which I guess. Is, I mean, there is some truth to that, but also... No. No. <laughs> the suspicion on you hasn't lifted entirely, Valent. After all, you received one of those letters, too. You were just as obligated to follow Magnify's instructions as your partner. I would not be surprised if Zack killed him, though. That's true. Zack is absolutely a terrible person. So I was, but only Zack Grammary followed them. Let us not speak any more of who shot what. Now that my partner has vanished, the question is moot. I'm more interested in learning something else, actually. What might that be? I want to know what Magnify had up his sleeve. How could he coerce you and your partner to kill him? The trick up his sleeve? <laughs> Perhaps you do not know. Know what? A great magician never reveals his secrets. Five Cyclops appear. <laughs> Four. I didn't think it would be that easy. The audience must remain forever in the audience. Bathing in the reflected glow of the spotlight. Alright. Fine. Let's do it the hard way, then. The trick up his sleeve. I'm flying by the seat of my pants on this one. There must be a path leading from the evidence to the truth. And that's what I'm going to find. To ask someone to take a life, even one not long for this world, that's asking someone to commit murder. Yes, our mentor was fond of dramatic moves and dramatic finales. And he got his wish. His life was taken. What weakness could be so powerful as to coerce someone into committing murder? My guess is it was a matter of life or death. Care to explain? Your troop lived in a world of showmanship. The flashier, the better. And flashy so often means danger, doesn't it? Let us make this as painless as possible. If you have proof of this danger, then show it. I'll be so happy when I can eventually listen to this music without having to worry about spoilers. <laughs> Every time I'm like, I want to look up this song, Artie's always like, wait! If you can look up the song, just don't look in the comment sections. Oh, right. But but sometimes it'll be like, recommend for you this entire spoiler. People, stop putting spoilers in your Ace Attorney video thumbnails! Please! Yeah. 
I, I'm sure I've seen some, but forgotten. You almost got spoiled on the Iris and Dahlia are twins thing. You're right, I almost did. That's what that was. I was like, I don't know, twins? <laughs> you were like, oh, it's probably nothing. I'm like, He's yeah, probably I'll just... I'm like, that's from a fan game, I think. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't see any. I didn't I didn't see what they looked like. I just was like, oh, there's two people. Wait, there's two people. I gotta scroll back up. The amazing Mr. Hat. He's very dangerous. Ah, and this is your idea of danger. You don't agree, Mr. Valent? If you want my opinion, I would say there is something far, far more dangerous. And that is you. Okay. It's a little early for me to be making mistakes. Think deadly, and what's more deadly than a fatal accident? That could be the source of all the Grammarie's problems. Let us make this as painless as possible. Proof of danger is it the diary? How would that one make sense? But it's dangerous because maybe we didn't see all the other pages. <sighs> maybe it like has all this stuff like, oh my gosh. This is my recipe for sweetbread a la gusto. It's terrible. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, maybe he has all the dirt that, like, his, his um, his, the other grammar is, He's like, just writing dirt about no, all these No, he dirt. is! Maybe he's Talking like, trash. oh my gosh, like, Valent, like, totally messed up this bunny <laughs> trick. Not for ever be able to blackmail him on it if he doesn't kill me. <laughs> I don't know, it could be that, it could be the gun. Gun would make a bit more sense. Gun? Why, that's one of ours! Spe specially designed for your show, I gather. A single bullet, one shot. What are you suggesting? We are magicians, Mr. Wright, not murderers. I'm not crying murder, Mr. Valent. I'm crying something far more tragic. An accident. Oh. Zack and Valent's quick draw shoot him. How long has it been since those shots were last heard? Was the shoot him canceled because someone might get hurt? Of course, whatever reason could there be? Well, it could have been cancelled because someone had already been hurt. F fascinating my Faustian forging friend. But tell me, what can you prove with a single pistol? Well, tell me what would have happened if there had been an accident. What if one of your bullets took a life on stage? The performance of magic is not concerned with what ifs. Oh, well, if uh, Trucy's mom's dead because of that, that could be proud. Yeah. It is concerned with precision. Precisely whom do you claim we shot? Looks like I've chosen the right path. Let's just hope he walks it with me. A life was sacrificed so the show might go on, and this shows who it was. Yep. Ooh, I'm dead. A word, if I may. Yes. Does it excite you to know you stand at a critical moment in your quest? Yeah, it does. Sort of. Then you'd never make it on stage. You're not fit to be a magician. Give it up. I hadn't actually been considering that as a career option. I'm sure you'll find something else to while away the time. Like, figuring out who the, the bullet hit. But, but that's... Zach Grammary's wife, and Trucy's mother. Thalassa, I believe was her name. Ah! Alakazaa! But, but how can you say this? How can you say she was struck by one of our bullets? Still in denial mode, eh? Thalassa was at the greatest risk of being shot. And this clearly shows just how much danger she was in. Isn't it the stamp? No. Mr. Wright, I envy you. It appears your chosen profession is far more lenient than mine. What do you mean? For us magicians, a single misstep can be... fatal. A single mistake can be fatal for an attorney, too. Ah, so it can! <laughs> Thanks. The last is the key. I can see her name affects him. But just a name isn't enough. I need to recreate that day in his mind. Starting with where she stood. Yeah, you, you got it. Good. Troop Grammarie's performances were very, very popular. So popular, they even made a commemorative stamp at the height of your fame. We were not merely the latest craze. We were an age. A golden age. It's all here on this stamp. There's Falassa, yes? Ugh! Trucy's mother is missing, I hear. What happened to her? I... I don't know! Part of his memory is still locked up. There is one thing you're failing to address. What's that? As you say, our troop was a world unto itself. If our leader, Magnify, was so inclined, he could hide anything he wished with ease. But, Mr. Wright, then he would have hid a crime, making him an accomplice. Not a great foundation for blackmail. 
Valance got a point. If one of the troop members died in an accident and Magnify covered it up, his innocence would come into question. Found the right address, Mr. Wright? I'm so close, there has to be something about how Falas's death could affect Zack and Valance's relationship with Magnify. I see in your eyes you still have something to say. How can you possibly prove you want more than you already have? I'll prove why Falas's accident tied your hands so completely with evidence with a person. And this is with where- With a person? It's freaking trucy. I would say. It's going to take a little knowledge of the players to crack this one. The accidental death of Zack's wife tied both your hands, and this information proves why Magnify holds so much power over you. Come on. <laughs> Were you by any chance trying to threaten me? N no, of course not. You'll never make a good blackmail artist. Never. Not a career choice I've been considering, actually. Give up your dreams, work an honest job. That's my advice. The troop is a tight-knit unit. It's all about the people involved. Their personalities, their histories. Who was Falassa, really? I see in your eyes you still have something to say. No better proof than the evidence! The accidental death of Zack's wife tied both your hands, and this evidence proves why Magnify held so much power over you. He had a syringe of deadly poison. <laughs> he alone um, knew the secret to the amazing Mr. Hat. Was it... Is it something stupid like the transferal of rice? Ha ha ha! No. <laughs> Were you trying to threaten me? Uh, oh. <laughs> I did not want to take a screenshot there, no. <laughs> I'm back. Is it with a person? Yep. Okay. This is where the other plot hole comes into play. Okay. Tied both Because remember hands. how Zack in the present told us that, or Spark Brushel told us that she was Magnify's daughter. Oh, yeah. And we're kind of taking that information back in time. But remember, Phoenix researched Trucy's parents and like all that. He could have stumbled across he like, oh yeah, her mom was. Yeah, that's his daughter. really easy to find. It wasn't a question of who saw, shot Falassa. Falassa herself was the problem. I forgot that she was the daughter. Yeah. What do you mean? She was Zach Grammary's wife, Trucy's mother, and Magnify Grammary's only daughter. <laughs> there was a terrible accident, and the two of you killed your mentor's only daughter. If that wasn't the key to Magnify's power over you, I don't know what was. It... It was... IT WAS AN ACCIDENT! Meanwhile, the dude in the back is just like, oh my gosh. There's no proof. None at all! But Falassa went missing. And your mentor blackmailed both of his disciples. It doesn't take a genius to put one and one together. Ours was... a complex family. You mean Troop Grammary? The master, Magnify Grammary, his only daughter. And his two disciples. That does sound like a recipe for disaster, doesn't it? Do not be tempted into faulty flights of fancy. Yes, there was an accident. But that is all it was. An accident. Zack and Valance, tour de force! The guns blaze, the bullets fly, straight towards that beautiful body on stage, and then crash Zeen Pow into everything but her. Now that is magic. It happened one day when we were practicing, same trick with a new twist. And... tragedy. But as for whose bullets stole Falassa's life, we shall never know the answer. Falassa disappeared from our lives. And Zack was bereft of his wife. Trucy lost her mother, and Magnify his daughter. And that led to blackmail, I take it. It is all part and parcel of the darkness that comes when the curtain falls. Huh. Okay. Why did Magnify Grammary try to cover up the accident? It was his own daughter who died! All I can say is, it was a critical time for Troop Grammary. A passing of the torch from Magnify to Zack and Valant. We all sacrificed so that it might be a success. Falassa's death was the greatest sacrifice of all. Yet, even when her life was extinguished, her presence was not. What do you mean? In time, we, myself and Zack, found we could no longer oppose Magnify's wishes. Magnify forced us to perform his art for his benefit. 
I see. I guess I can understand. I mean, he did lose his only daughter. But do you not find cowardice in his actions? Huh? To decide to hide the truth of your own daughter's death is one thing. But to then hang that death over as a guillotine above our heads? Things were dark behind the scenes in Troop Grammary, that's for sure. Does Trucy know? She was not told, naturally. Who would want to know that their father might have taken their mother's life? True. I had not thought of that accident for a very long time. I'm sorry to dredge up old memories, but this has helped a lot. Not to find Magnify's Slayer, I should think. True. Ah. After that accident, there was one who came sniffing quite persistently. A reporter? He called himself a newsman at the time. Often I spied him lurking about the dressing room, doing his research. Did you happen to remember his name? What was his name? Sorry, I have forgotten. But in the course of his interviewing, he became quite close to my partner, Zack. I liked him not. I see. His name, I do not recall, but his scent. The cloying aroma of mint. Yes, whenever he smiled, which was far too often. I see. Thanks for your help. It does no good to interfere with the past, Mr. Wright. You will not uncover answers, only wounds. I'm sorry. I had begun to notice a dark curtain hanging over Troop Grammary. And I began to realize what I had to do. I had to protect Trucy from that darkness. The reporter he mentioned. The newsman. I never learned who that was at the time. Though I've got a pretty good idea who it is now. That smile and the sickly sweet smell of mint. The last floss fin Fred connecting Zack Grammary to this world. Sooner or later I'd have to track him down. The reminiscence themes are really good in this too. They are. We're done with the past now. Cool. No more plot holes. And now we can go to Drew Studio or Sunshine Coliseum. Oh! Which we will have to do next time on Apollo Justice. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. I think we can finish the Mason system. Wow. Oh. There might be only two episodes of this Let's Play left. The final trial is like the shortest trial Seriously? period. Seriously? Is like, it ever. like 15 minutes? Is it literally No, like... it'll be a long episode, but it, there's no good way to break it up, basically. Oh, I thought it was going to be like, this trial will end in three minutes. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's happy. Everybody goes home early. Everybody goes out to Taco Bell afterwards. On, on no, Emma Taco Sky Bell Street. is for non-final cases. Final case, you go out to something better, like Chick-fil-A. Like Chick-fil-A. Or, or where was that? What was that hotel that they went to when Maya got kidnapped? Gatewater Hotel. They go to the Gatewater Hotel. The bellboy can uh, get them a discount. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Anyhow, look forward to next time. We're going to basically learn everything that happened in next cool. episode. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.